Dr. Stoppit reveals why late Kashango pointed out that he had no worthy successor in Zenu PF party. My dear people, the recall of members of parliament and councillors from the Opposition Citizens Coalition for Change CCC by self-proclaimed interim secretary general Senjizo Chibangu pictured has exposed the extent of the depravity and desperation of the Nguina-led dispensation of poverty, darkness and confusion. That Speaker of Parliament Jacob Mudenda ignored a letter from CCC leader Nero to disregard the instruction by Chibango who had imposed himself in a non-existent post and went on to recall the CCC parliamentarians. Exposes a morally bankrupt strategy by the Lacoste Cabal to deny citizens their right to be represented by leaders of their choice. Kashango, whose wisdom and telescopic foresight remains unparalleled would never have stooped to such embarrassing lows. This is why he pointed out that in the party he had no worthy successor as Scarf Moore regime's shameful actions have demonstrated. The crass actions of Nguina, whom Kashango fired for lack of probity, is a clear indication that he sold the nation bottled smoke when he promised to bring about democracy in the country amid the fumes of gunfire and tanks in 2017. This has clearly shown that one cannot expect democracy from a leader who was propelled into power through a coup and subsequently via sham elections, the latest of which was condemned even by the regional body SADC. It seems that Chibangu, who by his letter shows that he is a stranger to the English language, is now ZANU-PF's new attack dog being used against Nero and his party. As sure as I am a learned doctor. He will later be discarded in the same way as used tissue paper is disposed of. Poor Dagi, who has been reduced to howling from the depths of political oblivion, knows only too well the experience of being used and dumped by the Lacoste Cabal. I had a good laugh when I learned that Scarfmore will lead this year's commemorations which are held annually to amplify calls for the lifting of sanctions imposed on the country. These commemorations are coming just soon after the widely condemned shambolic polls in August which were characterized by widespread voter suppression and intimidation and the arrest of local observers among other disgraceful flaws. The fraudulent elections, if anything, will only strengthen the resolve of the United States to maintain the sanctions it imposed as a result of similar disregard for human rights in 2001. Added to this is the incarceration of senior CCC official job Jobsicola for nearly two years without trial and the most recent farce of recalling opposition parliamentarians on the strength of an imposter. Therefore, depriving citizens of their right to be represented by those they voted for not forgetting calls by chiefs sympathetic to the Nguina regime to deny opposition supporters food aid and fertilizer from the government. It really does make the calls for the lifting of sanctions as futile as winking in the dark. Scarf Moore is better off spending the day at his farm tending to his fish pond KKKK. It is ironic that October 25th was chosen as the day to make a rallying cry against sanctions by none other than SADC, whose electoral observer mission slammed the country's polls as failing to meet the regional. Basic benchmarks of free and fair elections. After being attacked by the Lacoste Cabal over its report, I am sure the regional body now regrets ever calling for such commemorations. The appointment of Tatenda Mavetra as ICT minister was celebrated as recognition of the country's youth and women contribution to the country's development. However, before the ink has even dried on her appointment letter, she is already showing signs of having been an underwhelming choice for the position. Asked in Parliament by the not so super Mandiwanzara about whether Starlink Internet will be licensed by her ministry. Mavetra went completely off tangent talking about threats by the European Union, the Patriot Act, as well as some nonsense about reputation and dignity of the country's leadership, and ultimately failed to answer the simple question of whether or not Starlink will be licensed by her ministry. Munapenga. Such runs by someone in a ministerial position are a damning indictment on Inguina's profound lack of judgment when appointing individuals of Mavetra's ilk, Kikiki. It makes me wonder whether he exercises any due diligence or probably just picks names out of a hat before making some of these appointments. Kashango would have never appointed such hopeless people to cabinet. 
It just goes to show that mediocrity begets more mediocrity. It would be churlish of me not to congratulate Lois Matt and the Moyo for being appointed the country's first female prosecutor general. It is my fervent hope she will do a better job than her disastrous stint as the first female head of the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. During her stint at the commission, her officers spent more time looking to arrest teachers for conducting extra lessons rather than apprehending criminals who are fleecing the country of millions of dollars through fraud and smuggling. It is not an exaggeration to point out that under Matenda Moyo's leadership, Zach Spark was worse than its bite. God forbid that she carries the same ineffectiveness to the office of the Prosecutor General. Munopinga R. Kashango Sheet Sheet. Dr. Am I Stop It. PhD Fake. Please like, comment, share and follow this channel for more information or updates on news and entertainment.